Okay, guys, it's Mike Sexton here again. Uh, appreciate all the hobby love from some of my streaming heroes. Uh, love the support and seeing from those guys the comments, the the views and everything. So I thought, you know, I'd follow it up with, uh, you know, 10 more players, you know, to look at some other old cardboard. But uh, try to go through these a little faster than the first video. The uh, first player... George Day Bancroft, a uh, couple 1920s strip cards here. Won't show the backs because they're blank backs, but yeah, uh, this guy's nickname was Beauty. He had a common uh, saying he would say from the bullpen when a pitcher would throw a good pitch, he said, boy, that's a beauty. Uh, so he kind of picked up the nickname Beauty. Had a 279 lifetime batting, averaged in Retired with 2,004 hits. George Bancroft. Or Dave Bancroft. Depends on what card. Next player. Herb Pinnock. This is 1933 Gowdy. Herb Pinnock. Uh, Herb played in the majors from 1912 to 1934. He did serve. 1918 in the military ended up with a 241 and 162 average they're not average but win loss uh, record and with a 3.6 lifetime ERA so played on a lot of good Yankees teams back then her pin 1933 Gowdy I just love these old cards, the colors. It's like art. The next card is in 1934 to 36 batter up, Bill Terry. These cards were made to fold in half and kind of stand up on a counter or something like that. And uh, they kind of displayed like that so his nickname was memphis bill had a lifetime 341 batting average 2193 hits in 1930 he batted 401.401 254 hits he's the last national leaguer to bat 400 Bill Terry was a stud in his day. Next player, same year, same same set. Mr. Chick Hafey. Charles Chick Hafey. Uh, this looks like the same image that's used on the 34 Gowdy of Chick. Uh, but it looks like it's like a painted rendition Instead of, this is the actual picture. Uh, so Chick had a lifetime 317 uh, batting average. So this was, uh, a lot of people have heard of uh, Branch Rickey. If you collect these old cardboard cards, you've heard of Branch Rickey before. And he was famous, you know, for uh, a lot of things. But his farm system, creating a farm system was one of them. And this was his first major success. Chikafi was the first major uh, find he had through his farm system. So uh, that's one thing that made Mr. Hafey famous. Now I love this set here from the 30s. This Diamond Stars. It kind of reminds me of a, the Tattoo Orbit set. This is Mr. Frankie Frisch. The Fordham Flash was his nickname. The Fordham Flash. Got some paper loss here on the back, but I don't care. I love the color on the front. Uh, ended up 2,880 hits. Lifetime 317 batting average. Won the MVP in 1931. Holds the record for most World Series hits 
with 58 for someone that doesn't play for the Yankees. And he's only surpassed by Yogi Berra and Mickey Mantle. Also holds the highest career batting average for a switch hitter. Man, there were some good players back then. Look the color on this card. Just, it's like art, man. You know, the new ones are nice and all the full and shiny rainbow and all that. But, man, I don't know something about the color on these cards I just really like. Frankie Frisch. Next card, same set, 1935 Diamond Stars, Mr. Ted Lyons. Mr. Ted Lyons, only pitcher in the Hall of Fame with more walks than strikeouts. He's kind of one of the disputed Hall of Famers. Uh, but here's why I'm going to give him a nod and go ahead and say, yeah, he deserves to be in there. The man played in the major leagues from 1923 to 1946. Spent 1943, 1944, and 1945 serving in the military in the war. That's a man right there, I'll tell you. Uh, ended up with 260 wins. You know, 300 wins is the benchmark, you know, nowadays. So if he played those three years, he'd been right on 300 wins. So I don't have any problem with Ted Lyons being in the Hall of Fame. Just a just a nice card. Love the color. Love the color. Next card is from the 1935 Gaudi set. This is the four in one card. I wish this was the Ruth, but it's not. It's the Bottomley. Uh, Jim Bottomley. Sunny Jim. Lifetime 310 batting average, 2,313 hits, won the 1928 MVP. Uh, hold, holds or held at one time the record for most RBIs in one game with 12. Uh, how he was uh, discovered, a police officer was watching him playing for a local team and recommended him to Branch Rickey. So, Hall of Famer, recommended by a police officer. Pretty neat story. Next player, Master Melvin, Mel Ott. 1939 play ball. I just had this, I bought this raw off eBay not too long ago, had it graded, tickled with the grade, just tickled with the card. Uh, First and foremost, this dude was 5'9", 2,876 hits. If he'd been 6'2", he'd probably have 4,000 hits. 511 home runs, uh, 304 batting average, 11 straight all-stars. He was the first batter that made famous the high leg kick. So, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, see that nowadays. People will kick their lead leg high before they swing. Mel Ott made it famous. When he retired, he had 200 more home runs than the next guy in his league. Mel Ott, stud. Next player, Charles Herbert Red Ruffing. Six World Series rings to this guy's name. 1,987 strikeouts, 273 wins over a span of 26 years. Of that, two years also served in the military. Let me tell you this story. When he was young, he played for a a mining team. He worked in a coal mine. They also had a, a team. Uh, he was in an accident where his foot got smashed between two coal cars. Had four toes amputated. And he figured out, hey, I won't be able to play the field anymore. 
better learn how to pitch. I think it worked out pretty good. So, Charles Herbert Red Ruffin. Or could have been known as Six Toe Ruffing, I guess. Last player I'm going to feature tonight. Vernon Lefty Gomez, 1939 play ball. Uh, five World Series rings. He had a couple nicknamed Goofy Gomez, El Gufo. Was kind of a wise guy. He kind of would, you know, have fun out there. Uh, 1,468 strikeouts. Career record, 189 wins, 102 losses. Second Hispanic ever elected in the Hall of Fame. Vernon Lefty Gomez. That's it, guys. Thanks.